I'm Gail Hampton Mosley for the Agape Christian Center. And we are here every Monday night at 7 p.m. on station bbsgospelnet.com. So you now have time to tell someone. Call your friend and let them know that we are on the air. Or you can text them. If you don't want to get off, get away from your viewing area, your computer, just text them and tell them we are on the air right now. And you can reach us anytime, day or night, at Agape WM on Facebook. You will see all the information that we are putting on Facebook. So we're on Facebook, Agape WM. And you can call our pastor at area code 901-270-1727. Or you can reach us at our church number. And that's 870-702-7008. Now remember those numbers. I will come back and give them to you again. But I, the numbers are area code 901 for our pastor, 270-1727 or the church, area code 870-702-7008. And our address is 1823 East Broadway, where we are there every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for Sunday school, 10 o'clock for our morning worship service, and 7 p.m. on Wednesday night for our Bible study. And you would not want to miss our Bible study because we have a Bible study that is out of this world. Or you can email our pastor. You can also reach him at bishoplvon at yahoo.com. Now, we're having a special guest tonight, and our pastor is here, and he and our guest is going to bring a word from the Lord. So just get, get ready, set back, and relax, and enjoy. The very next word you will hear would be that of our own pastor, Bishop Lawrence Vaughn. Amen. God bless you, beloved. We are so grateful, amen, to be with you tonight. Amen. We pray that we find you uh, well in spirit. We pray that we find you uh, in the favor and in the care of the Lord. Uh, I'm so grateful to have with me tonight, amen, one of my brothers, um, uh, the minister, uh, Andre Muhammad, amen. He's um, a, a powerful man of God, and we're just grateful to be able to have him with us tonight to share uh, in this broadcast. As Sister Gail said, we want you to have the privilege and have the opportunity of joining this broadcast, amen, by uh, making sure that you call your friend or call your neighbor and let them know that all they have to do is go bvsgospelnet.com and they can view and watch this broadcast live. If you would like a copy of this broadcast or any of our broadcasts, amen, we ask that you would reach us at one of the before mentioned uh, numbers that she gave you and we would uh, be glad to, amen, be a part of your library. Uh, I want to give special recognition tonight before uh, I introduce my guest formally. Uh, my aunt uh, from the Chicago Mass Choir, the city of Chicago, uh, Sister Rosalind Newman, just celebrated a birthday on yesterday. And I want to say happy birthday uh, to Aunt Rosalind Newman. Uh, she sings with the Chicago Mass Choir. She's been here with us in the studio. Uh, I'm grateful she traveled with us, amen, to the Rhythm of Gospel in July back in Birmingham. And I'm so grateful uh, for uh, sharing a birthday celebration, another year that the Lord has blessed her with uh, on that born day. I uh, also want to give special recognition to a young man. And I say he's young man, but he celebrated his birthday today. He's 86 years old. And he celebrates his birthday today. His name is Mr. Cedric Hemphill. Uh, and he's local, uh, but he celebrates 86 years uh, today. And for Mr. Uh, Cedric Hemphill, I'm so grateful and I thank you so much. He has been a follower. He has been a supporter. Uh, he loves black movement. He loves black empowerment. Uh, he loves... Uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He loves you. He loves Minister Anthony Muhammad. And uh, you brought him a special gift. Yes, sir. <clears throat> From the Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan, as well as uh, the believers of Moss 55 in the city of Memphis, uh, under the uh, leadership of Minister Anthony Muhammad, yes, uh, he gives as a gift to Mr. Hemphill. 
uh, two DVDs uh, from the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, uh, Minister Farrakhan, uh, the Memphis Leadership as well as the Memphis Cannon Center uh, when the minister was here two weeks ago to speak. So uh, his daughter, uh, who's a member of our church, is here tonight, and, and I know uh, that it's going to be a blessing for him to receive these. Good, good. So thank you so much. Yes, so Amen. So very, very welcome. So very welcome. Brother Andre, um, introduce yourself, and then we're going to talk. I got some questions for you, and we got a word tonight that we're going to share. Yes, well, uh, first let me say my name is Brother Andre Muhammad. I am the assistant, or one of the assistants, to the Mid-South representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, student minister Anthony Muhammad in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I am a native Memphian. I've uh, been a member of the Nation of Islam since 1993, and I have been a helper in the ministry and since 1994. And um, that's what I do in terms of our ministry. But now, I I'm very intrigued I'm very, very intrigued that you, uh, your mic's not on. Uh, very intrigued to have conver conversed with you the other day. And as I conversed with you the other day, um, it, it's, it's so ironic. People have problems uh, understanding how we can come together. Right, yes, yes. People have problems understanding how people of different faiths uh, different uh, backgrounds or religiosity, if you would, can come together. The Bible says how good and how pleasant it is that brethren can dwell together in unity. Yes. Uh, I'm grateful to be able that we can cross whatever indifferences we have and come to the common denominator, and that is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, I, I made that statement, and a lot of people really don't understand. And we have a lot of followers and a lot of watchers and believers, but a lot of people have this stereotype of this, uh, this misconcept uh, of what a Muslim is. They're looking at the television. They're looking at ISIS. They're looking at the Taliban. They're looking at al-Qaeda and all of these things, and they're trying to equate everybody that's Muslim with... Uh, with a, being a hate group or being a, a radical group. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, what is the definition okay. of the word Muslim? Muslim uh, means one who submits his or her will to do the will of God, whom we refer to by the name Allah. Uh, and Islam, if I may add that, Islam is the way of submission. It is the name given to uh, the way of submitting to God. Now, Islam is not a religion. Islam is the nature in which God created the human being. Not the black man, or, but the human being. Um, in the Holy Quran, it says, Islam, the nature made by Allah in which he created man. So, that's what Islam is, and a Muslim is one who submits his or her will to do the will of God. Now, if we were to give that a name, that, that nature or that practice, we call it Muslim. Well, I, I'm very intrigued, and again, a lot of people don't understand, and, and they have the opportunity to hear it straight from your mouth. Yes, sir. Um, Saturday, you and I conversed, and I was so intrigued uh, at, at the fact that you being a Muslim, mm -hmm. uh, you said to me, I cannot but every day of my life, and I'm quoting you. Okay. You said this Saturday to me. Yes, sir. You said, brother, every day of my life, it is my strive to be just like Jesus. Yes, sir. You remember saying that Saturday? I, I remember it clearly. Well, but, I, you know, there's a misconception of belief that people believe that Muslims don't believe in Jesus. Well, <laughs> well, we believe in Jesus, brother. We believe in Jesus the Christ. We are expecting the return of Jesus the Christ. We believe in him so fervently that uh, we, we are taught, we take it upon ourselves to strive to be like him, 
to follow in his footsteps. If you're following someone where they put their foot down, in the physical sense I'm explaining, you put your foot down. So when you study the scriptures uh, at the Last Supper, Jesus, Jesus gave bread and wine. And he explained the bread. He said, this is of my body. And correct me if I go off on this now, <laughs> He said, as long as you eat thereof, you shall not hunger. And then he gave the wine, and he said, as long as you drink thereof, you shall not thirst. Well, we know when you eat in the literal sense, the next day you're going to be hungry again. But Jesus said, you shall not hunger if you eat of this bread, which is of his body. Well, we are taught that that is symbolism in Scripture. Jesus is describing the bread represents his life, his way. And if we partake or eat, not in the literal sense, but study his way, as you take in wisdom, you're taking in food, mentally and spiritually. Well, we won't be subject to the appetites of the flesh. We won't hunger to disobey God. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. And it's the same with the blood. The blood is the life fluid of a living person. Okay? Well, the spiritual teachings of Jesus the Christ is the life fluid of the spiritual self. And as long as we drink of that, we won't thirst for knowledge. Because what he gave will keep us. I, I, I have um, as, as we're giving this gift to Mr. Hemphill. Yes, sir. I had the opportunity to attend the Memphis leadership with the uh, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, sir. And I heard from my mouth, I, from my own ears, I heard, I saw with my own eyes the teachings of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. There is such a uh, misrepresentation uh, of the doctrine yes. of the Nation of Islam is. as well as the Muslim faith or the movement. One thing he says, and I'm quoting him, yes, sir. that Jesus Christ is the manifestation of God. Yes. He teaches and preaches Jesus Christ, Absolutely. Jesus the Christ, mm -hmm. as his words were. Yes. The, the problem I have, uh, Brother Andre, is the simple fact that we have so many people that will fight us at why you and I are sitting at the same table getting ready to share scripture, at why you and I will try to uh, appeal to a people the way of the Lord. Yes. You said something to me that was so profound. You said, if I shall say three plus four is seven, and you say five plus two is seven. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, is that we reached our destiny. Right. I don't understand us people. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I do have a word. Can we share the word yes, of God? Certainly, All right. certainly. The, the Bible says in Galatians chapter number six mm -hmm. and verse 10. The Bible says in the King James Version, yes, sir. as we have therefore opportunity, mm -hmm. let us do good unto all men, That's what it says. but especially them mm -hmm. who are of the household of faith, which faith mm -hmm. does the Bible say right? Mm. It doesn't say which household? Of faith, does that particular verse of scripture say that the Baptist faith, the Methodist faith, the Pentecostal faith, the Muslim faith, which household of faith? It doesn't specify. It does not specify. But the Bible says that those of us that are trying to do the will of God mm -hmm. for the common cause of our people, and I think that the problem is, is that when we try to empower our people, and I say our people, I'm talking about African-American people. I'm talking about black people in particular. And people get upset when I try or when we try to teach black people, stop 
the violence. Mm -hmm. That is what the minister teaches. Yes. He, I quote, he said, how can I go to Washington and approach a Congress or approach a government Correct. and we leave our people in the conditions that they're in mm -hmm. without having a unified strategy. I was listening. Wasn't I? Yeah, you was listening closely. <laughs> without having a unified strategy of how we're going to bring our people out. I can't go if we're going to have black on black crime, if, right. if we're going to continue to rape and rob and murder our own people mm -hmm. and sell drugs to our own people. How can I go and, and petition them if we ain't going to do our own homework? That's correct. That's exactly what he said. He said that. Mm -hmm. But the problem I have is our fight is not from without our fight to try to empower and educate our people mm -hmm. is not from the oppressor, but it's from the household of faith. Mm. Yes, yes. See, dear brother, if I may say, um, and I pray that God would guide my heart and my words. And let me say, brother, I didn't uh, do properly. Let me thank you for allowing us this platform. Uh, to communicate to your audience and to those of you who have tuned in on behalf of uh, Student Minister Anthony Muhammad and Mosque number 55 in the Nation of Islam, and certainly myself. Thank you so much, brother. But the problem, brother, and, and I, I'll say it like this. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan said these words to us, and I'm paraphrasing. He said, every prophet in Scripture that came when he left, Satan came right behind him and divided his community. He came, when scripture came to quote unquote Christian, Satan came right behind Jesus, divided his community. Came right behind Noah, divided his community. Came behind, right behind Moses, divided his community. And there is division. Within Islam, there's division within Christianity. Notice you said Church of God and Christ. Baptist, Methodist, Episcopal. Where did all these names come from? Okay. Now, first, now you got division. And there are those who take the word of God and use the word to make merchandise of the people. Prophets of God take scripture and guide us with it. Satanic-minded people take scripture and make merchandise of the people with it. Absolutely. Now, in order to do that, he has to make evil fair-seeming. He has to give an exegesis of scripture that's not in keeping with what God and the prophet said. Notice in Genesis, soon as Adam and Eve is given instruction, who comes right behind God's instruction? And you're right where I want you to be, comfortable. <laughs> Satan. Come right behind him, and he gives an interpretation of what God has said not to do. See, he adds to. Listen at how he says it. He gives the truth first. You have heard it said that thou shalt not eat of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. He's right. That's what God said. Right. And you have been told in words that the day you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. That's what God said, right? That's right. But listen at what he adds. You won't die. Your eyes will come open and you will be like God. So he attaches some benefit or perceived benefit to deviation from what is right. Okay? Now, that's the stratagem of those who divide. And when people become comfortable, what division and what uh, misinterpretation of the word of God does, brother, is it allows us to stay the way we are and not accept the responsibility to change yes, yes. in accord with the law, statutes, and commandments of God. That's why prophets come. Yes. They don't come because everything is all right. They come because the society has gone astray of God's way. And if we've gone astray, our behavior is aloof. Our behavior is off. So the prophet comes to reform the people, and the people's behavior has to change. But the thing that you learn about men and about human beings, 
Your Bible says the fool despises correction. So when people come with scripture that uh, requires that we correct, people are comfortable in their sin. Absolutely. See, people want to bring the word of God down to where they are instead of striving to live up to God's word. That's right. So the division and the fight comes. It's not really the truth bearer in words. It's the people's desire to stay where they are. Notice what David says in Psalms 55. David began to pray because of the same instance, because of what we're talking about. David says this to the Lord. He said, give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Mm -hmm. He said, attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise mm -hmm. because of the voice of my enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. Now, now, notice David is petitioning God mm -hmm. because some people mm -hmm. are against him. Mm -hmm. Some people are oppressing him. Mm -hmm. Some people are causing him to mourn. David says in verse 4, he said, My heart is sore pained mm -hmm. within me, and the terror of death are falling upon me. Fearlessness and trembling are come upon me. David said, I'm scared. I, I'm, I'm fearful, I'm, I'm trembling, I'm scared. He said, and horror hath overwhelmed me. Mm -hmm. I'm really afraid. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to go to church. I'm afraid to go to mosque. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to turn a corner. I'm afraid to go to the store. I, I'm, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. He says, and I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. For them would I fly away. And be at rest. Mm -hmm. David says, if I had wings like a dove, mm -hmm. I would leave mm -hmm. the condition that I'm in. Mm -hmm. I would flee from the obstacles that I'm encountering. Mm -hmm. He says, lo, verse 7, mm -hmm. then would I wander far off. Mm -hmm. David said, I'd go too far. Mm -hmm. if, if I leave from where I am, i drift into territories, mm -hmm. I'd be too far off. He says, and remaineth in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. I would hasten my escape from a windy storm and tempest. I'm trying to get somewhere. Watch mm -hmm. this. Destroy, O Lord, and divide the, their tongues. Mm -hmm. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Ooh. As you just said, mm -hmm. that, there's a, that was a need for the oppressor to be divided, that the oppressor's tongue, mm -hmm. that they may not be able to communicate with each other mm -hmm. because of the attacks on us. Mm -hmm. Watch this. He says, verse 10, day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof, mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it, wickedness in the midst thereof, deceit and guile depart not from her streets. Mm. Now the problem I got with this is as David is making an acclamation to the Lord mm -hmm. because of what he's going through, right. because of his encounters, and David reiterates the fact, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Remind you of Jonah. I, I'm, I'm terrified <laughs> of where I'm, what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. but the problem I have is the next two verses of Scripture. Mm. The next two verses of Scripture, it it appears that David is talking to the Lord about what one would identify as an adversary mm -hmm. or a diehard enemy. That's right. But notice what the next two verses get, says. Mm -hmm. He said, for it was not an enemy that reproached me. Mm -hmm. My fear comes from the house. Ooh. Within. My fear comes from the people that sat in church on Sunday morning. That's verse 12, brother. My fear comes from the choir members that stand behind us mm -hmm. while we minister. The deacons that sing hymnals in service to start devotion. That's what the word says. I didn't write this. Mm -hmm. 
Let me ask you a question, if I may. Or make a comment. It's a question, and it's a rhetorical, really. Why do you think judgment begins in the house of the Lord? <laughs> because that's where the enemy has hid himself. The Thank Bible you. says mm -hmm. that we have, that he has taken himself to be an angel of the light, light mm -hmm. and have disguised himself mm -hmm. and have hid himself amongst the congregation. Mm -hmm. That's what Lucifer means. Our fight should not be with one another. Correct. Our fight should be, God, give me the spirit of discernment mm -hmm. that I'm able to identify who the real enemy is. Mm -hmm. I, that I may be able to, to look in the, in, the, in the optical vision of a man mm -hmm. and see the soul of a man mm -hmm. and see the inside of the man for who he really is. Mm. So, so David says, for it is not my enemy that reproached me. Mm -hmm. He said, then I could, he said, if it had been my enemy, mm -hmm. I can handle it. You can handle it. If it had been my enemy, I can deal with I it. I could have borne it. I, 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 I expect it mm -hmm. from my enemy. Right. But, but David says, I want us to understand, he said, neither was it he, I'm talking about my enemy, that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, he said, I would have hid myself from him. Mm -hmm. But you have other preachers and ministers mm -hmm. that hate on each other. Yes, sir. And expect believers to see Christ in us. Mm. How can we expect the congregation to see Christ in us and you and I are at odds with one another. Well, brother, can I'd like to look at that on a broader scale. Let's take, let's take it outside of our individual houses and look at it from the perspective of us as a people. Who have been those who have been the betrayers of the freedom fighters that have risen among us? Who betrayed Harriet Tugman? It was us. Yeah. Who betrayed Ida B. Wells? Who betrayed W.E.B. Du Bois? Who was at odds with him? Who betrayed Malcolm? Who shot him? It was somebody who looked like us. Huh? Mm -hmm. Who betrays every voice? Who betrayed Martin King? Mm -hmm. So that principle is a principle that speaks to the behavior of us as a people. And whenever a voice of strength has arisen among us to speak truth to power and to champion the cause of our liberation and to speak to the oppression we've suffered, the loudest voice, and when you study scripture amongst the, uh, the children of Israel, the chief opponents of Moses and Aaron were the magicians. Well, those are the clergy. The chief enemies of Jesus was the Sadducees and the Pharisees. That's clergy. Isn't that something? Absolutely. Well, brother, it comes from after Satan divides and gives an interpretation, the people follow uh, that understanding, and the people are deceived. Now, if the book teaches, brother, that Satan deceives the whole world, who are any of us, to not think maybe I just might have been tricked because we are all at odds. I mean, who, who started all of this division? And when you do the pathology and trace where the enemy is, where the hidden hand is that has produced the division among us as a people, you will find it will be those who have given an exegesis of the word of God that's not in keeping with what God and his prophets taught. It's very ironic that you say that because the next verse of scripture, uh, verse number 13, mm -hmm. as David again make this plea to God, and David says that this was not my enemy, he explains in verse number 13 who it was. Mm -hmm. He said, but it was thou, mm -hmm. a man, a man, Mine equal. Mine equal. My. My what? God. My what? Mine equal. 
one. Say the other one. My guide. My guide. The one who's supposed to what? Guide, guide. me. Okay. Mine acquaintance. Mm. That's three types of people. These are folks that ride in the car with me. To some of us, these are folks that sleep with us. All right. Yes. Go to the gospel, brother. There'll be two in the bed. <laughs> there'll be two grinding at the mill. Then it says there'll be two just grinding. What does that mean? See, when truth comes, brother, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us, Jesus is seen in Revelation with a sword coming from his mouth. A two-edged sword. Yes. That's how truth is. It cuts on both sides. Mm -hmm. And it sets the righteous at variance with the wicked. And sometimes the problem is right in our house. And like you just said, right in our bedroom, brother. Right. If you notice, Lot's wife didn't want to go, now did she? Mm -mm. She looked back. See, that's how deep the divisions are, brother. And when the truth comes, then naturally, those who uh, don't want the way of God and those who have been deceived and blinded by the touch of Satan, and I would say, brother, I submit, our people have been so destroyed and have been so mistaught. That's why Carter G. Woodson had to write the book, Miseducation of the Negro. Yes. The same people that did not treat us right, that enslaved us, our weak naive enough to believe that they taught us right. All right. They said it wasn't incompatible for us to be a slave and a Christian. How can you be a slave and a follower of Christ right. when Christ frees us? So, brother, as difficult and as painful as it may be, we need to reevaluate or take another look at what we've been taught as a people. Yes. I'm talking about with regard to religion. I sent you a... Uh I sent you a uh, text message a week or so ago, and it said that if a man has not been has been incorrectly taught his history, mm -hmm. ninety nine percent out of one hundred, that man is destined for incarceration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. Because that. a person has no knowledge of where he's going, mm -hmm. if he has no knowledge of where he's come from, mm -hmm. and 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 I I think. Uh, the rational thing to do, uh, or, or the, the, the most the, the most acceptable thing to do, is the wisdom, the knowledge that you have. I was so intrigued today. I shared with Sister Gail that I was so blessed to be able to have this broadcast tonight because only people on your level mm. understand the level that you're on. All right. And I said to her that. To, to be able to see some young, powerful, energetic, articulating, well-spoken, well-taught black men such as ourselves. Praise be to And God. I had to start laughing because I put myself in that crowd. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have, I have to say quickly, brother, I'm, I'm just a student. If you notice, we in the Nation of Islam refer to ourselves as students. That's right. And that is because the way I understand that is once you think you know, that's when you stop learning. Amen. Well, Amen. well, when you think you know, that's uh -huh. when you know what you don't know. Right. <laughs> and see, I, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said it to us like this. He said, brother, if you were to live a thousand years, what you could learn in that length of time you can put it on the head of a pen, and it would have room to move around All right. <laughs> in comparison to what there is to learn. So why not maintain the posture of a student? I want to, you know, and you, you mentioned the minister just then, and I want to do a, a historical thing. Uh, I've learned how to be a student. Yes, sir. Uh, I've learned how to uh, research my history, and I, I want to, I want to just go back just a minute because I want to get your take on something, and I want you, I want you to give us some informative information concerning it. But let's go back in history. Yes, sir. Uh, in 1963, when Dr. King uh, participated in the March on Washington, mm -hmm. 
historically, what people don't know that it was not Dr. King's march. It was not his march. Wow. Dr. King was a fill-in during the march because some ministers, some preachers opposed mm -hmm. that there was a spokesman that was supposed to speak at the march who happened to be homosexual. Wow. And a bunch of pastors and a bunch of preachers opposed the fact that this man being homosexual would address Washington. Okay. King happened to be a fill-in. However, the march, now the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan had nothing to do with that right. in 1963. However, the march in 1963 was as a result of the march that they were trying to make in 1941. Mm, okay. And in 1941, a group of people tried to get themselves together mm -hmm. to march on Washington for the same thing mm -hmm. that we're talking about today. The same petitioning mm -hmm. that we're talking about today. Mm. Brother, our people tried this in 1941, but at that particular time, Roosevelt was the president who sent out a, an order that it would not be tolerated for a group of us mm -hmm. to march on the Washington's Capitol. Wow. I have to say to you today, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has made Louis Farrakhan, excuse me, has made it clear that one, this is not a march. Two, we are not petitioning this government All right, man. because what we deserve, it is not within their power now to give, right. nor do nor do they even have the will to give it. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan has said, brother, when a servant of God, when the prophets of God come to nations, inherent in their message or the revelation that God reveals through them to the people, it's warning and it's guidance. So there is an or else clause in every prophet's message. Clean up or else. Well, Do justice or else. They may not say it outright or else, but inherent in the message is you need to do these things or the chastisement of God will descend upon you. Let me, let me explain to this to you in Old Testament theology. And a lot of people, theologians, I, I just happen to be a... I just happen to have my doctorate degree in theology. All right? What you just explained is called the oracle of God. Mm. And the oracle of God, there is what we call a message formula. Mm -hmm. As God gives the message, he says, this is what, in the, in the Jonah situation. Yes, sir. There was an oracle of God, Nineveh have sinned against me. Mm -hmm. And I want you to go to Nineveh speak to them, tell them to do this or else. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In the oracle of God, there's a message formula, there is a judgment formula, mm -hmm. and then there's a way out Absolutely. of the situation. Yes, I would agree with that. But one would disagree with the fact that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says justice or else. Mm. God says justice or else. Mm -hmm. God says do this or I'm going to execute my wrath upon you. Mm -hmm. And we have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Can you explain this 20th anniversary of the uh, assembly on Washington? I'll do the best that I can. All right. Based on uh, some of our talking points. Yes, sir. Justice or else is a convening of all of the oppressed, those who have not received justice, the dissatisfied, 
and the disaffected of the country. Primarily us as a people, but our Native American brothers and sisters, all women in particular, even poor whites who have been disaffected by the unjust policies and practices of this government, but primarily dealing with us. Now, we as a people, dear brother, and, and I pray a lot will guide my words on this one. We don't look at our sojourn, our situation, what we've endured as a people through the lens of scripture. We don't see or have not been taught to look at what has happened to us in light of scripture. Now, the, uh, there was uh, some theological graduates and a question was asked of them. If the Bible begins in Genesis with the bringing into existence of this world system of things and it teaches to the end of this world system of things and the prophets saw up to the end of this world system of things, did the prophets see America? They couldn't answer the question. And no, the question was, and if they saw America, where is America in scripture? Because if the prophets saw to the end of this world, they had to see America. They had to see England. They had to see Britain. And if they saw America, they had to see the transatlantic slave trade. They had to see it. And what does scripture say about how to answer that problem? Because yes, God did see America through the, the prophets did see America. Yes, the transatlantic slave trade is mentioned. Not literally, but the people that went into bondage for 400 years, guess who that is? Mm -hmm. I know another people is claiming their identity, but that's another discussion for another time. Well, how did God deal with that and where in Scripture? When you look at the episode of Moses and the children of Israel and Pharaoh and Aaron and Joshua and Caleb, that episode, I've learned recently that the Joshua Caleb episode is not historical at all. <laughs> all of it is prophetic. Much of what you read with regard to Moses and the children of Israel is prophetic. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is we are living in an Egypt. Egypt means house of bondage. Has America not been a house of bondage for us? See, Pharaoh is not a name, it's a title. Just like president is not a name, it's a title. Hmm? So who's the Pharaoh of today? Now, I know he's our brother, but we're not going to get into that. Okay? But what I am saying to us, if we look in scripture at that episode and how God addressed it, we will see parallels to what we're going through now. And in geometry, if side angle side of triangle A is equal to side angle side of triangle B, they are said to be congruent. So you will get the same outcome. But prophetically speaking, we don't see ourselves as being the fulfillment of anything in Scripture. When we are taught in the nation of Islam, and a careful study of biblical Scripture in particular will bear this out, those who are claiming to be the people of God are not. Why would Jesus say this? Those who say they are Jews and are not, I shall make them of the synagogue of Satan. That suggests that somebody is going to be running around masquerading as the Jews. When I teach this at church, in our Bible study, concerning Benjamin Netanyahu mm -hmm. and the Israel of today, um, I have to deal with the Babylon of yesterday. Mm -hmm. and, and, and people miss the identifier. It, it's just really hard. The Bible said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And it's because we reject knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's why we're destroyed. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll have a person that will try to argue the fact that these are the people of God's, these are the apple of God's eye. Mm -hmm. uh, which in fact we should not disclude ourselves. Right. Well, let me, let me I'm going to give you some passages of scripture and then I want to say something about 10, 10, 15. In Genesis, we read, know ye of a surety, Abram was his name at the time. 
that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them. Thy seed shall serve them, whoever this them is. And they, to them, shall afflict them, thy seed, for 400 years. After that time, listen at God, I will come. And I shall judge that nation that they, Abraham's seed, shall serve. And afterwards they shall come out with great substance <laughs> and go to their fathers and be buried in a good old age. Now let's fast forward to the New Testament. John 8, starting at verse 32. Jesus is in a controversy. And ye shall know the truth, Jesus says, and the truth shall make you free. Now listen at what the Jews' response is in the gospel. Listen carefully. Why sayest thou we shall be made free? For we've been in bondage to no man. Now hold it. It breaks. Because <laughs> later on they say, we be Abraham's seed. Well, how can you be Abraham's seed in one breath and in a breath prior to that admit that you've never been in bondage when it is foretold that Abraham's seed will go into bondage? That's why Jesus, he crept up on them and identified them. Go read it. At a certain point, Jesus said, I know you. Because he questioned, he said, if you were Abraham's seed, you would love me. Absolutely. If you were Abraham's seed, you would do the works of Abraham. Then Jesus said, I know you. You are of your father, the, the devil. devil. Now, Jesus called people devils. But nobody got a problem with that. Now, the scholars in religion, dear brothers and sisters, teach that most of what you read in the Gospels is prophetic. Only about 20 to 25 percent of it is historic. 75 to 80 percent of it is prophetic, meaning stuff that is to happen in the future. You know, real briefly, because I do want you to yes. address the 1010. Uh, one thing you and I talked about the other day, the author of the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, one in particular, Mr. William Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. uh, and we we note in Psalms 46 yes. uh, that William Shakespeare put his signature yes. uh, in the Bible. A lot of people don't even know. Yeah. I mean, we, we and, and, and listen, I, I'm not, please understand me. Mm -hmm. I'm a teacher of the word of God. Yes. But I have to teach the truth, brother. Yes. And, and people have now identified me no longer as Christian but Muslim mm. because it appears that I'm teaching something contrary to Christianity. You know what I found out? That Dr. King had a dream. Mm -hmm. And then he woke up. Yeah. He <laughs> sure did. Well, brother, you know what I would ask them quickly? They say, well, because they feel, based on how they feel primarily, you will find. Not based on a study that you're no longer a Christian or no longer representing the Christian faith. Well, I asked them, was Jesus a Christian? And you will find Jesus never gave a name to what he taught. Now, this is not to denigrate or say there's something wrong with being a Christian. To be a Christian is a very powerful thing. You are saying I am crystallized into oneness of, with God following the example of Christ. That's not lightweight. But the problem comes when we use the label Christianity as a barrier between people of other faith. Oh, my God. That's what the, and Muslims do the same thing. All people of faith, we use the label. Now, on 10, 10, 15... I want to say we are organizing buses out of Memphis. Um, we got a lot of buses, well, a lot of people inquiring about buses coming out of Memphis, out of West Memphis. And uh, we have some contact information on going into Washington, D.C. via the bus ride and how to get um, in touch. Um, Flipping I, through my phone I right got now. it from you. Yeah, I sent you a text. I got it today. It's the Million Man March 20th anniversary. It's Saturday, October 10th, 2015. The bus transportation is as follows. The bus will depart Friday on the 9th at 5.30 p.m. And it will uh, return Saturday. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, 
arrive in D.C. Saturday the 10th, okay? And it will depart Saturday the 10th at 7 p.m., the same day the cost is $130 per person round trip. You can call to reserve your seats today at 901-730-4006. That's 901-730-4006. Now, 10, 10, 15, brother, the groundswell is, is enormous. And there are those out in the public and social media that are trying, you know, to combat and put stumbling blocks in the way. But to no avail. Uh, the groundswell of support, as you saw, brother, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is crisscrossing the country. And the young people are coming to him. And to just to show you how the enemy has worked among our young people, brother, where the Nation of Islam is concerned, our young people know nothing about the Nation of Islam. But they know about Malcolm X and the lie that the enemy has put out that the nation killed Malcolm. That's because we have allowed for too long the enemy to control the narrative of our lives, the narrative of our sojourn. That's why our people still think the, the title for King's speech in 63 was I Have a Dream, when the true title of the speech was Check Return Marked Insufficient Funds. Absolutely. That's why they've relegated that brother to I Have a Dream. When you just said moments ago, he woke up. Go and study the last four speeches of that man's life. In particular, go study the speech he did April 3rd, 1968 in the city of Memphis. He was calling for a boycott. He was about to boycott Christmas. That's what we are about to do. That's what 10, 10, 15 is about in part. Boycotting all of these holidays. Black Friday. Black America, when we've wanted justice, when you... Uh, attack what I call their God. Because you know the scripture says you can't serve God and mammon. See money is the God of many of the people in this world. When King wanted movement from our enemies and share the pain the boycott of the Montgomery bus boycott of 63. It got results. And he was planning before they assassinated or I should say murdered our brother to boycott Christmas. And when you go and study his last four speeches, you will learn that. So here we are again with the opportunity. Look, let me say, I got to have you come back. Yes. Our, our time is run. And, I know. And, we got to get deep into 10. We are so grateful. Time. I'm so grateful to be able to set. Uh, we have with us, amen, our local president of the NAACP, Brother Shabaka Afrika, yes. Yes. Uh, who has been a frequent um uh, uh, guest on our on our broadcast. He's here with us tonight. Yes. Uh, there's some things in the Crittenden County NAACP. Oh yes. Uh, that you are actively a part of, and we're grateful. Yes. Uh, that you know he's wanting to share, um, and and I I want to uh, have this as an opportunity for you know him to come back, you to come back. I'd love to get Mr. Bass here, and I'd love for people to get to know us. Yes, sir. Uh, you cannot you cannot judge the the contents of the book mm -hmm. by looking at the cover of the book. That's right. But when you know the in the inside of the book, uh, and I'm grateful to be connected with some brothers uh, such as yourself, such as our president of NAACP, Mr. Bass, uh, Mr. Barlow, Amen, Brother Eric, who's here. Uh, I'm I'm just grateful, Brother Michael Johnson, Amen. Uh, we just, got just some brothers in the house, brother Edward 3X, and, and, and brother Cedric Muhammad is here. Well, well I mean, I'm just we grateful. family, man. That's right. We and and I'm, I'm grateful for the work that we're doing and we're going to do together. Yes. And yes. Um, people have to understand that to God be the glory. That's what it is. All right. You know, in 1995, that was the song that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan had sang at the end of the march. Wow. To God be the glory. Wow. Well, listen, this is our time. God bless you, my brother. Thank brother, you for thank coming. You, you got to come back. I don't mind. I, I certainly will come back. All right. All right. God bless you. God bless everyone. Thank you. Did you not enjoy those words coming from our own Bishop Lawrence Vaughn? Brother, this subject is and vast. And Minister yeah. Andre Muhammad. They gave us some history of ourselves. And these are the kinds of things that make you want to really think. So remember, we will be back here on next Monday at 7 p.m. on bbsgospelnet.com. 
And don't forget, you can always reach us on Facebook at Agape WM, or you can call our pastor, area code 901-270-1727, or come by our church. It's 1823 East Broadway in the city of West Memphis, Arkansas. And you can email us at bishoplvon at yahoo.com. And until this time next week, enjoy your day and be blessed in the Lord.